So let me start off by maybe sharing my screen here. Um, okay, so yeah, you can see that I'm using some different styles <laughs> in GitLab uh, because I, I changed it. So I'm just testing out a possible uh, design and I thought it was better to, to do it in the browser. I saw this uh, somewhere. I think Dimitri came up with this uh, gray sidebar and gray background, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came up with it and I, and I thought, well, why don't I just try it? And I came here and I used the CSS, the old style bot. And basically you, uh, you add your own CSS styles to a website um, okay. and it works pretty well. Um, nice. Yeah, and so I'm testing it out and so far so good. I, I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, so about this issue, design responsive type scale, type ramp. Uh, I've assembled some of the references here from also a previous exploration that I did when we were designing the first uh, type scale, so a mm -hmm. non-responsive one. Uh, and this is this issue here, uh, establishing a type ramp of vertical rhythm. Um, but this doesn't have any type like responsive uh, uh, concerns, right? It, it was just something to get out there to have uh, some typography guidelines, and these mostly work in larger breakpoints, not so much in smaller. Uh, and this has been implemented with uh, already, it's going to be part of GitLab. I mean, it's already merged into, um, into the code. Uh, and what has been merged is, is this markdown. So okay. are you familiar with how we divide the, the three main categories of typography, like UI typography? Kind of. So anything that's based on markdown, in, for example, in our issues, right? We are mm -hmm. where we write markdown. Yeah. Again, the markdown style is then used, right? Uh, so that would be the compact markdown. So okay. for... Uh, places like, uh, so for example, um, markdown files, or if you go to the wiki, mm -hmm. uh, these, because these are very big uh, areas that are just dedicated and focused on the content itself, mm -hmm. uh, those are going to use the markdown styles, which, which are the big, larger, yeah. larger ones, exactly. Yeah. And then we have the compact markdown, which don't have any. Um, like borders, any horizontal rules. And mm -hmm. these are essentially styles and, and the, the, the type sizes all stem from this. So if you look at this one, header one, it's exactly the same size as header three here in Markdown. Okay. So basically we just, here in this compact Markdown, we just cut the two, uh, the two first sizes and uh, we just use the rest of them. Mm -hmm. um, but here in compact markdown, the paragraph is using a 14 pixel size. And in markdown, because we have a larger uh, area to play with, we are using 16. Mm. So this means that with the new, the, what was just uh, merged uh, just some days ago into uh, GitLab, uh, right now it's behind the feature flag and you need to, run this to be able to see it. And I, and I, was, I was trying to have it running here. Uh, let me see if I can do it. Um, else console. Yeah, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but uh, the idea is that uh, right now it's already in there and you can, we are just going to test it out and iron out some bugs, but mm -hmm. eventually you'll be able to see it in the markdown area. Um, and these styles that we're seeing here are essentially the styles that we have right now in the design system documentation. So when you go, uh, for example, here, these are the styles, the typography styles and the type mm -hmm. ramp that we are going to have in markdown files and in wiki pages. Um, and, and we thought, because uh, the problem with our current typography is that the styles are the same, whether you're writing uh, an issue description or you're writing a comment, right? And so if I'm doing this and it's a heading one, right now 
this is too big to be in a in a, a, a comment, yeah. right? Uh, and also in an issue description. So what you see people doing because this is the issue title. If I want to have a, a title, a section heading inside my issue description, yeah. I don't put the heading one, right? I yeah, because it should be smaller than the main three. title. Yeah. Yeah, and this is what everyone does, and, and this is part of our uh, even GitLab's issue templates. So when you're inserting a new, uh, writing a new comment, a new issue, and we use an issue template, mm -hmm. this is this, we're going directly to uh, heading three because it's it's so it's it's the ideal size, right, um, for uh, a section heading inside of your issue description, uh, not a heading one. Um, because if I put a heading one here, it's going to be to look too big. Yeah, huge and with an underline. Yeah, uh, a border actually. Yeah, and and that's why we we went forward with the idea of okay, so maybe the best solution. And this was me and Tori uh, when this was implemented. We thought, okay, so maybe let's divide it and let's have one markdown, which is the perfect typography for reading content. And then let's have one that we call compact markdown, which is basically used everywhere else uh, mm -hmm. that, it, uh, that users can type markdown. But usually there, it's markdown that is confined into a specific area and maybe has more content around it, right? And that's the case for comments, for issue descriptions, for everything that is not markdown files or wiki, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is basically the, 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 the rationale that we have for this. And then we have the other set, uh, the final set, which is the UI typography. And this essentially follows much of what you see here. Uh, and, and it's using the same sizes. Like, for example, this header two uh, is the same size as header one in typography, in UI typography, uh, but doesn't have horizontal rules. Uh, mm -hmm. And also the. Um, the line height is a bit different because this is going to be aligned with UI controls. Uh, so it's a bit more, I can show you here in sketch. So this is what we have today. So the UI typography, as you can see, um, this is what we have and we're using now in our pattern library it is this kind of typography and these sizes. Um, and you can see that we have, where is it? Yeah. Exactly, the UI medium label, um, this has a 14 pixel size and a 16 pixel line height. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to do a paragraph, uh, we needed to add this style, which has a larger line height, it's 24. Uh, because if I had it at 16, it would be too short. It is, uh, yeah. but in most UI, I notice it's, it's, it is actually 16 pixels, the line height. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and 24, to be honest, it looks a bit too large, maybe even, even for 14 pixels font size. Mm -hmm. So at some point I was thinking, maybe we should have a four pixel baseline grid because it gives you more flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. You can ad adjust the line heights a bit more, but it does add, you know, another, <laughs> another layer of, com of complexity in some mm -hmm. cases, right? Right. Um, but yeah, it does give you flexibility as well. I mean, in, for our typography, um, let me just check. We're actually using a four pixel baseline grid, but just oh, for yeah. Okay. yeah. I never noticed this. Okay. Yeah, this, it's the, this lines here, and this is just for the typography. Yeah. Uh, because uh, if, if we were going to have uh, a four pixel baseline, that would also so that we would also use for our spacings. Uh, it, it, you would have so many different variations of, of paddings and yeah, margin exactly. that we thought, okay, no, let's just use eight pixels for um, spacing, general spacing, and then for typography, especially for uh, the line heights, let's use a four pixel baseline grid. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we, we can play around with that. Um, and, and have different uh, line heights yeah, for cause, paragraphs. Um, yeah, because 1620 would be ideal, probably. 
Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the paragraph you have there right now, right? Yeah. And it's just two lines and it looks like they're drifting apart. It doesn't look like a paragraph, especially when you have more content below it, right? Yeah. If you yeah. had it at 20, it would look nice and compact, but not too compact. Yeah, I, th I think this, this is also to do with, uh, like this particular <laughs> example is not very good because yeah. the content is very close to it and the, the line length is very short. But, but yeah. I, I get what you're saying. So if the line went length was a, a bit longer, uh, it might help, but maybe having it as 20 can be a good, um, like a, a good compromise and yeah. uh, a good uh, sweet spot. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> so, uh, so here already in our sketch files, we have the UI typography mm. and then you can see the markdown typography. And basically mm. what we did when I was working on this, I first built out the whole set uh, with in the whole si all, all of the sizes with the markdown typography, which is the most um, extensive uh, scale, and then from there we derived the smaller UI typography and the smaller comp uh, compact markdown. Um, mm. And the main difference bes besides the different heading sizes is that for UI typography, the default font size is the 14 pixel which is what we use today uh, everywhere in, 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 UI, yeah. in the UI, right? Um, for markdown typography, as I said before, it's 16, which is very good for like reading content and you can see it in, the, in our design system. Like reading these paragraphs, it's, it's, I think it's just very good, right? Uh, I, I really like it reading our documentation here, um, at least in my screen size. Mm -hmm. And, and for compact markdown, it's 14 again, uh, which is what we currently have for um, issue descriptions already and, and comments. We left that for now as 14 pixels. Mm. Um, and all of this work uh, was based on, on this file as well, which is available in our design repository. Uh, and yeah, this is bit more or less the final the finalized versions of what we were working on. And this was the research that I did at the time uh, where I looked like this was our, I don't know, I don't think you were here, Matei. I mean, this is what we currently have in our CSS. Okay, before, so that's a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before this merge request to integrate CSS lab in our code uh, to have the markdown uh, type in GitLab CE. Um, this is what we currently have. We have all of these sizes uh, and uh, and the variations, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. You can see like uh, uh, 24, 23, it's, I mean. 22, 21. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so it's, it's, this is our current CSS. This is our current type scale uh, still today, um, although we already have that work. And then I basically picked from a lot of um, popular uh, design systems and, and pattern libraries, uh, what are the styles that they were using just to see how they uh, differentiated headings from larger titles, uh, section titles, uh, small copy. Uh, and yeah, I basically assembled here a lot of them. Mm. Um, and uh, what I noticed at the time is that just some of them actually thought about responsive type typography. Most of them just focused on, okay, like this, uh, let me see an example. Like for example, uh, MailChimp, right? focus on these type sizes. Um, this is what we have. This is what we work on, but they don't give, uh, maybe they have, and, and I'm sure they, they adapt some of these sizes, if not all when you're in a smaller screen size, uh, but they don't put that in the documentation. So not all of them write documentation for responsive typography. Um, and, and that led me, so the, the ones that do talk about responsive typography, is for example, Apple, and they have it here. Um, and, and this is the, um, the dynamic type sizes that they have. So when you change, for example, in your iPhone or iPad, you change the, the density and the, the default type size. Uh, yeah. So the default is large and the large body is 17 points. Yeah. 
uh, and if you change it, it, it resizes um, according to what is the density that you set in your accessibility settings. So if you have, if you have needs to, and, and you need to, to see the, the type in a larger size, and if you put the extra, extra, extra large, mm. the body is now 23 instead of 17. Um, and so they, they do this adaptation. But so this is not necessarily responsive typography. This is based on the user preferences. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know if you use an iPhone or, but I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, you kind of know what, what I'm, what I'm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I never changed my preference, but I know it's there because, you know, some people do change it and I, it's something I work with. Right. And I know, for example, I, I will mention this later as well is mm -hmm. we use, we set our current base font size in pixels. Right. And that's, not yeah. good for accessibility, right? Because if the user changes their default font size in the browser, it will always be reset to pixels because the pixels is the most specific unit you can use in CSS, right? So it will always override user's uh, preference. And we should actually set the base font size to something like 100%, mm -hmm. which will equal user's preference if they do have it set. If not, it usually uh, defaults to 16 pixels. So if you then want to change the font size to 14 pixels, I believe it's either 80% or something. Probably. Yeah, exactly. So that's what we're going to do uh, with, um, with our typography. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, I think th this will be integrated with uh, this markdown type already. Um, and uh, we're going to, we're going, basically we're going to have to remove that pixel declaration in the body or HTML tag so that people can properly resize uh, their, uh, yeah. Yeah, their, uh, the font uh, and their size in, in their browser. Mm. Um, yeah, the other example is uh, material design. I was looking to see if I could find it here because they, they've changed this uh, um, a couple of times and I, I don't seem to find it, but I think they have something regarding different type sizes. Um, yeah, but I'm not seeing it right now. Then I think uh, Microsoft, they also talk a little bit about um, the type sizes according to what, you, um, what you're seeing right now. Mm. Um, and then the best examples I've seen is from BBC, um, where they basically group devices uh, and, and breakpoints. So they have group A, B, C, D, um, and here you can see that for each type size, which they give these awesome names, yeah. um, they have a different configuration of, uh, and, and pairing of font size and line height. Yeah. I worked with, um, the lead front end developer that worked on this at BBC mm -hmm. because he later joined auto trader where I worked for before joining it, right. right? Right. And he explained this a bit to me because we talked about, yeah, assigning non-size uh, non specific names mm -hmm. like this, right? So Canon, Trafalgar, Paragon. It's awesome because you might, in some cases, have an H1, but you need it to be quite small, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe we do have this now, right? We do have H1, H2, H3 yeah. styles, not actual, you know, so it's... Yeah, we, 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 have, like, we have it like this. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I think I, I can see the benefits of both uh, ways of doing it, uh, of uh, having uh, the names as more generic as possible. So you, you're, you're not tying it to specific uh, yeah. HTML elements. Um, but at the same, si at, at the same time, uh, if you are not very familiar with this, uh, you, That's a problem. you yeah. have to memorize. Yeah, and uh, the idea with, uh, for example, calling it header one, header two, etc., is not necessarily to tie it to the elements, but to think about what the size, is yeah. the, the 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 hierarchy, right? Yeah, what exactly. is my most important heading in my page, and and that yeah. would be a header one. What is my second most important? Um, which 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 will would would be the same here, right? And, and, and that's what they say, like, this is the QR blog post title. So this is probably 
the most important one or this is yeah. can also be the most important one um i don't know but but yeah it's 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 a different approach i don't think it's it's better or worse it's just uh, i think ours our approach is actually quite good as you said we we have the classes i think it's h1 but it's a class and you yeah. can know okay so this is the, the largest that we have h1 is always the largest right so you, exactly. you have an h3 element in html but you assign it an h1 class and it makes sense right so we have semantics completely separated from the styles it works out and everyone gets it right so I think it's actually what we have is actually better than the BBC example <laughs> um, because they use these uh, names which uh, derive from old typographic uh, measurements, right? Yeah. But this, this is something that typographers know. It's not something developers would, you would expect them to know or even designers these days, right? Yeah. Because exactly. type is not set in metal anymore, <laughs> right? Yeah. And these were used when it was set in metal, but it's not. Yeah, you you have you have to 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 memorize it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's some of the names came from type book produced in that size. For example, primer was used for religious books ordered by Henry VIII. Henry VIII. Uh, yeah. So so yeah. Um, no no, but I mean here, what I found more interesting was that they had this differentiation groups. of different groups and and yeah. basically kind of the it's it's the four breakpoints that they call it uh, the break breakpoint groups. Uh, mm -hmm. Typically, feature phones, smartphones, tablet devices, etc. And then they have the type sizes. And what's interesting is that they essentially use. Uh, so if you look at Canon in Group A, it's twenty-eight thirty-two, but you can find this measure uh, in other groups. Like this same measure, you can find in Group C yeah. twenty-eight thirty-two, and then in Group D, right? So they, they're using more or less the same sizes. They variate some things about line height, but usually it's, it's the same. Um, you, you can see here 1216, 1216, uh, then again 1216. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're, they're kind of variating, but they also, they always use the same thing and, and that's interesting. Uh, so they go from the smallest size possible is 12 and the largest type size possible is, sorry, 52. Uh, which I don't know why it's not in group D. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's for tablet devices. They want larger sizes. Maybe. Yeah. So, but they they had this uh, this uh, concern of writing it down and making sure that all of this was documented. Mm. Uh, then the other example is from Buzzfeed, and this is not immediately apparent that they do responsive typography or that they have it documented because you see these type sizes. And you're like, okay, I don't see anything else. You just see this here. They don't talk about responsive. But then if you look closely, they talk about responsive prefix utility classes, uh, which uh, basically they prefix with XS or SM or MD or LG for the different uh, breakpoints. And with this example here below, uh, that you can see that they have uh, extra small text six, medium text five, large text four. And if you resize the window, um, you, can see, you can see this paragraph resizing according to the sizes here. So right now it's text four, so it's 16 pixels, but now it's going to resize to five and then to six. So it's going down to 14 pixels and then to 12 on these breakpoints. So when I resize, you can see that it will get smaller, yeah, yeah, it's smaller, and then it will get even smaller. Yeah, there you go. It even updates the class on the left. Yeah, it even updates Change the class six, for, yeah. uh, for this demo. Uh, and so this is interesting, and essentially, they, from what I've seen here, they don't define a strict uh, type scale for each breakpoint. They just define the sizes and let people pick what they want depending on breakpoint. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, so if you want, you can just type this. Uh, if, if you just follow the sizes here for extra small, this will apply to all breakpoints, but you can easily override and change per breakpoint what is the size of a specific text, which is very interesting. Um, but at the, same, at the same time, it doesn't give guidelines as to 
what is the largest size that we can use somewhere and what is the smallest size that we can use somewhere yeah. else. Um, Plus they do probably have the breakpoints defined somewhere, right? Maybe not on this page. Uh, they probably have it. As, yeah. Here. yeah, so they have it. So they have responsive prefixes for a lot of things, which is amazing. Uh, there you go. So these are the breakpoints uh, with the min widths. And then you can see like all of these uh, attributes and properties have responsive prefixes and classes. Text sizing, text alignment, display, floats, margin, padding, all of this. So you can really control um, in a very detailed way the behavior across breakpoints. Yeah. And this is, this is very interesting as well. Uh, it's another approach. Um, and this one, Future Learn, uh, it's, it's really interesting because they also, uh, they, they have all of the sizes here small, medium, large, uh, crossing, according to the breakpoint. And also they, they have these names that you have to memorize what, what they are yeah. for. Um, <laughs> some of them are, are very, you, you can know what they mean, uh, like nano, micro, milli. Okay, maybe these are the smallest ones, but you need to know that they have like pico or kilo or mega or something yeah. like that in the middle. Um, and so th this, this is quite kind of similar approach to, to BBC as well, where they, you can see that the same type sizes is, are used. Like for example, micro, it's here, then in medium, it goes down one level, and then in large, it goes down another level. Mm. So the third, the, the third sm the smallest, um, the third smallest size in small, is now the smallest, the smallest one in large. So they have this progression that you can see in all values. Mm. Uh, and essentially it ranges from this size, which is really big, 783 pixels uh, or, or RAMs or whatever you want to call it. So you have this size and then all the way down to 11, 24. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool because they, they talk a lot. Yeah, you can see the sizes here, um, yeah. all of the sizes. And they even link to this calculator, which ah, shows, you, scale. Yeah, yeah. shows you the, the size of the, that they're using, or what is the, the progression and all of that, which mm. is kind of interesting. Um, what I've found when I was working on the typography is that this amount of control and, and detail and, and having all of these fine-grained levels I think it's too much of a choice, right? Yeah. Uh, and and you, don't, you end up not knowing when to use 16 or 18 or 20. Yeah. Uh, should I use 18? Should I use 20? Uh, and, 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 and I think the less choices you give with, for example, our typography uh, here for UI typography, I think this is awesome, right? You have... Heading one, I mean, this display we're not using right now, it's more, the idea would be to use more for empty states. Mm -hmm. But for example, you have adding one, adding two, adding three, adding four, and you can see that this, the, the, difference, the difference in sizes is very noticeable, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that makes it easy for us designers to pick what is the best size to use here, but also for users to understand the interface. Um, because if you have all of these fine grained styles, the users are not going to see the difference uh, between a page and another when it is 20 or when it is 22, right? Plus they have the decimal numbers there as well, which is a bit strange. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, I, I, I don't think that the browser translates this. No, <laughs> it translates either up or down probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is another approach and you can see that again, that they're making this progression and then they basically have this, uh, they have this scale and mm -hmm. then they trim from the top and from the bottom when they are moving across uh, smaller or larger breakpoints. Um, and then finally, you can see with Shopify Polaris, they just make two differentiations. They have large screen, large screen type and small screen type. Um, and, and here it, it's, 
I have I don't completely understand what is the logic behind it. it they, I'm sure they have some logic, but I can see it immediately because in small screen, you can see that you have the largest one is 27, 24, 21. And here you don't see the 27, nor the 24, nor the 21. You have different sizes. Mm. Um, but maybe they just derived a different scale for each um, for each uh, breakpoint yeah. or for each kind of screen. Um, and in the larger one, it goes from 40, 42 until um, 12. And, and, and I like this type scale because it's also very simple. You have the largest one, then you have this title, a smaller one, uh, then you have a smaller one and you have this adding. And it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of easy to use. And then here it's in, in the small screens, they go from 27 until the smallest one, which is 13. So this is, was just an overview of what I've found so far and, and what I found was uh, interesting in our case. Uh, so let me pull up one design that I, I think it was the one that I uh, banged my head uh, the longest regarding front sizes. Um, and so in this, like in this redesign of the issue list and other elements, mm. um, what I did here is I created artboards for each of the breakpoints that we have. And so these are the breakpoints that we have today. So, well, this is not a breakpoint, but, um, but you have between zero and uh, 768, and then between uh, 768 and 992, and then between 992 and um, 1200, essentially. Uh, and these are the breakpoints that, that we have. These are basically the small sizes, uh, the smallest widths in each breakpoint. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that I did for this particular design, which I, I found it was kind of necessary, and when looking at it in uh, uh, a mobile phone, I, I thought it was too big, was, for example... Here, the smallest sizes, so here, this, these elements are 14 pixels in font size. These are all 12. All of these are 12 pixels. But then as you go smaller, like here, these, this is already 12. So it went down from 14 to 12. To, to yeah. 12. These, these are still 12 pixels in size. But then when I came to this breakpoint, you will notice that this one is not 12 anymore. It's actually 11. And if I put it at 12, I th actually thought it was too big for also the importance of the, the data itself. And when viewing at a certain distance um, and uh, with this kind of screen size, right? Because mm -hmm. this kind of screen size is more for tablet view and you, pick up a tablet and you look closer to a tablet then at a closer uh, distance yeah. than a desktop, right? Um, and, and so I thought it would be better as, a, as 11 pixels, but I'm not sure. And here in, in mobile, um, yeah, it, it just works much better uh, in, in 11 pixels uh, because it's kind of, it's a really small detail, like the path and the ID of an issue. Mm. And if you put it at 12, I think it, it's too big and it kind of battles with the other data, which is more yeah. important. Um, Do we have 11 pixels in our scale at the moment? We don't, we don't have currently in our okay. scale. Yeah. So, so that's, that's another thing. So we already, it's, it's not in our scale. So if you look here, uh, we go as low as 12 pixels for, for our small size. Um, but uh, curious enough, we have 11 pixels for these badges, for example. Okay. This is 11 pixels bold. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, this is 11. I think this is one of the only situations where we have 11 pixels. Um, mm. and, uh, and so, yeah, this is was just to show you a little bit of how, how we got to where we got. And I, I hope this was um, 
this shedded some light on why we decided some things. Mm. Um, but now we, we have, so I wanted to talk about constraints. So the, the first constraint is the breakpoints, uh, I think, because these are going to define everything that we, not everything, but it's going to define a lot of what we do. Um, and I mean, breakpoints, the, the way I look at it is they are, there are basically some, some guidelines that uh, you have and some restrictions that you have put in place to help you adapt the content better to different screen sizes and also other, um, other uh, properties, but mostly screen sizes. And they help you design better with those limitations. But the yeah. fact is that we don't know which screen size people are going to use. So the breakpoints are just there to help us. It's not, I, I, if we say, for example, in the future, okay, let's change this breakpoint from 992 to 991 because we think it makes more sense. It, it's, it doesn't matter, right? It, it doesn't matter if it's like 10 pixels above or 10 pixels below. Yeah. Uh, it, the most the thing that's most important is that it adapts well to the content and that we're able to design properly for the different screen sizes. Um, but this is a restriction, and I wanted to hear your thoughts on what do you think about our breakpoints and how do you think this could affect our typography essentially. So our breakpoints, I would assume, what are what are they based on? Because it's quite strange to go from zero to seven sixty eight and have nothing in between, and then what? What is the nine ninety two one? So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we are using the breakpoints from Bootstrap. Uh, okay, um, yeah, that would explain a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that would explain a lot. Yeah, because yeah. I hear that all the time. It's based <laughs> on what comes from Bootstrap, right? Yeah, uh, I think I think it's it's too limiting for us but, and it's often the case whenever I hear it, it's what it what comes from bootstrap right either it's paddings or margins and it doesn't fit with with our baseline grid or whatever it's too limiting um, for us and I would say it's the same for breakpoints I think it, we would need to be a bit more flexible mm -hmm. uh, because as you said right on the smallest screen you might actually reduce some font sizes to sizes that are below our current smallest sizes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's simply because you're holding the phone quite close to your eyes and it's still easy to read even if it's set in 11 pixels. Yeah. And the same applies for the tablet, but the screen is a bit larger. So you can still use the font sizes similar to the, to the phone, uh, but maybe because you have more room, you would want to increase some heading sizes or do some other stuff, right? Maybe you can already limit the max width of a paragraph so it remains a bit more readable. Right. Um, so, and we don't have, we don't really have a breakpoint that would be between, you know, the very basic phone, uh, phones that are maybe 320 pixels in, mm -hmm. in width, right? Which mm -hmm. is the old iPhones and some yeah. Androids, the old ones. And now it's much more popular to have larger phones, which are, you know, how much is the, the my phone, which is the regular iPhone 6, is 578 width. Mm -hmm. And then you have the plus size, which I don't even know what the width is, but it's larger than that. And again, you would probably want to change some things, you know, just the details, not everything. Because 11 pixels on that size will still look nice on the things that are not as important, right? But maybe yeah. the, the titles, because you have more room to work with, maybe the titles can be bigger or maybe they can be uh, heavier or whatever. Yeah. So we use the system funds, so which we were a bit limited in, in weights, I guess. Yeah. So, so the, the good thing about, for example, Bootstrap, and as again, I think breakpoints are a really difficult topic uh, yeah. for you to decide which is the best exact pixel that you're going to use for your breakpoint. But the good thing is that they introduced this breakpoint between the 768 and the zero. Um, so you can control uh, from between 
576 and 768, you can control what happens here. Yeah. Um, and, and so these, they say this is for landscape phones, and, but it might also include exactly what you're saying, the larger iPhones and larger, uh, like yeah. those, those phones that are not tablets, but they are not the smallest phones ever, right? Yeah. Um, so maybe this can help as well. Yeah, does, this, exactly. does this address what you were thinking? I think it does, yeah. So are we going to stick with the bootstrap breakpoints? I don't know, to be honest. I don't have I don't have a strong opinion for or against. I'm, I mean, for for the smallest breakpoints, like uh, uh, defining what uh, uh, between zero and five hundred and twenty six, this breakpoint, this breakpoint, this breakpoint. I think I'm comfortable there. What maybe we can do because of of our demographic and and the people that use GitLab. Um, they use a lot of people use so 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 large uh, monitors like larger than this breakpoint. I think it could be interesting for us to look into an even larger breakpoint, mm -hmm. uh, so we can control. Uh, because I see, for example, let me just quick. I hope this doesn't uh, mess the the streaming uh, the streaming the 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 screen sharing. But let me put a really big screen size. So I don't know if you're still seeing the screen. Yeah, yeah. Is it, is it larger now? It is. Okay, yeah. So for me, this is really tiny in this monitor, but uh, it's just for demo purposes. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you see people taking screenshots like this because they have such a big monitor. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, and this is all wasted space, right? It is. Uh, it so is. I feel like if we had another breakpoint, we could do better with this. Like, for example, have the, the, the issue description here, but then have the comments on the right side, for example. Yeah. And so you have two columns for content. I don't know. Um, and I feel like that is where we lack a larger breakpoint for us to be able to to play around with these things. Um, I, I'm, but again, I'm not sure about what would be the ideal size. Um, I'm just thinking out loud, out loud that this can be something that breakpoint that Bootstrap does not offer to yeah. us. We, go, we only go as far as this. Yeah, I agree. I think we should have a, an, an additional breakpoint for really large screen sizes. I use, I, I think it's a 4K monitor. I never use my browser on full width and height, right? But even on this size that I do use it, the font size, which is 14 pixels still, is sometimes a bit hard to read, right? So what I'll do, I'll just go closer and I'll do, I'll read like this. And it's actually really bad for my posture, right? <laughs> and for physical health. Yeah. Keep slouching, right? Exactly, exactly. So, on larger screens, again, maybe we can increase the base font size uh, from 14 pixels to 16 pixels. Yeah, and yeah, this, yeah, you, this is something that you got yeah. here. Yeah, I, exactly. I really like that idea. Um, and, and especially, we, we are doing that, as I showed you uh, here um, in our markdown typography, we're already doing that yeah. for the base font size. Uh, it's it, the paragraphs are going to be 16 are going to be exactly how we are seeing them yeah. here in our design system documentation and they, they look beautiful right they, they look yeah. really easy to read at least in my resolution but i guess that even for as i was just writing it down here uh maybe have a larger like ads uh, or consider a larger even an even larger breakpoint for bigger screen sizes yeah. Even this larger breakpoint, we might say that this 16 pixel paragraph is too small. Maybe the best is to have 18 or 20, yeah. like yeah. medium has it, for example, you know? Um, Maybe you need more of them. Maybe you need a 1440 where mm -hmm. you switch to 16 pixels and then you have an additional one, 1680, or maybe what is the next one, 1720? Not sure where you switch to 18 pixels, right? 
Yeah. Um, so I, when you ask me about the breakpoints, I think they should be, they shouldn't be so so device specific. I think they should be um, kind of reliant on the content and how do you make the content exactly. easier to digest on yeah. on that screen size, right? So it should be if the screen is actually a lot larger than 1200 you can expect that you're looking at it like this like i'm looking at my screen right now mm -hmm. and 14 pixels is too small uh, because mm -hmm. i want to have you know sit comfortably on my chair and don't slouch and re still read comfortably and 14 14 pixels is too small so it should be at least 16 pixels or maybe 18 pixels and if you what, what is the resolution that you have the oh wait so you use the default one i actually this map uh this place there it is uh okay so i'm using the default sizes that come with a uh, macbook right which is the scaled and it's not the default i actually increase it a bit hmm it doesn't tell me the exact pixels resolution though. I think if you, let me just, I think if you hover, uh, I, it does tell me it's, yeah, if you hover over it, it looks yeah. like 1440 times 900 is mine. Oh, okay. It's, it's what I have as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's what yeah, I have. As well. You don't use an external monitor, right? You use uh, your laptop screen. Yeah, I use I use my laptop, and and this for me, it's it's the the perfect, perfect. one. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's actually very good because the laptop is usually a bit closer than your external monitor is. Uh, but fourteen forty on my screen, which is a bit yeah. further away, it's I would need it to be actually a bit larger. Yeah. To switch it. Yeah. Okay. So the font remains the same. So let me let me put myself a little bit how you are in distance to the camera. Yeah. So like this. I, I don't know if we're as tall. Uh, if we are equal <laughs> in height, but yeah, this is too small for me. It is. Yeah. This this far away, I can see myself going forward a lot, and that's why I usually work like this because this is a very good distance for me uh, yeah, yeah. to have uh, with my uh, laptop. Uh, but but I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, one thing we need to know is if we're using Bootstrap's uh, SM, like new small, small breakpoints, um, consider an even larger breakpoint for bigger sizes. I think for us to consider this, it might be best if we if maybe we, we separate that into another discussion because we don't have that breakpoint today. And it might be interesting for us to, before looking at typography at that level, just put the breakpoint and, and see what people do with the breakpoint maybe. If they, um, if they use the, the breakpoint or not. Mm. Um, I don't know. I have to think a bit about it, but but it's it's a valid concern because yeah, uh, you can adopt the layout based on the breakpoint as well. So yeah, maybe yeah. we can do that. Okay, so this is breakpoints, and I'm using the, the, this comment as a agenda for this call. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the the other thing, and I also wanted your thoughts about uh, this is how would you think is the best way for us to move forward? And uh, especially regarding the smaller sizes. So looking at the examples I, I showed you, the way I'm thinking about it, but of course you, you might have an even better suggestion, is to pick on, uh, what is it? So to pick on what we have today in terms of font sizes and design it as for it to work the best as possible for um a, a small breakpoint so let me put yeah. this as, for example 320 and okay we're working with 320 and now i'm going to maybe say that um okay at this distance like people usually look at let me put it as something like this okay at this distance maybe this is too big so i'll have to make this smaller so this could be the default 
So yeah. basically define the sizes for the smaller breakpoints and then basically interpolate and create the other sizes. Um, from those, yeah. From, exactly, until we get from, the, um, from zero going on through all of these breakpoints until yeah. what we have today. Because yeah. this typography scale is designed for mostly these two breakpoints, but not these. Right. Mm. It works very well here, but you're going to note it. And you can see it today uh, because this is using the typography. If I put it in responsive mode, because we don't have breakpoints here, but if I put it in a very small width, so let me just really quickly adapt this. And content, min width, no min width. So if I put it here with iPhone, for example, this one, this is, this might be too big, um, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. or not, I don't know, but, or not. but maybe, yeah, maybe the paragraph size would still be fine because mm -hmm. it is actually quite a, uh, quite a small font size, but the titles would probably be a bit too big, especially the H ones, right? Because you only yeah. get to fit three words in a one line. Yeah. So it could be a bit smaller, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what, what do you, if you were to do this yourself, like approach this, uh, the, the, the redesigning and, and pick, picking on this uh, scale that yeah. we have today and adapting it for mobile, what, what would you do? Do you think this is a good approach or? Uh, either you can do that. You can take mm -hmm. the scale that we have today and try to adapt it for mobile. I mm -hmm. do that quite often actually. Yeah, um, because for, in our example, most people will use GitLab on desktop and laptops, right? Mm -hmm. Fewer will use it on on the mobile device, and it's because of the nature that the nature of the product, basically. So I think that approach would be fine. If we wanted to go completely mobile first, you could go and completely redefine the type scale for the mobile screen, the mobile device, and then mm -hmm. derive other sizes based on that. Um, I think the four pixel baseline grid should work fine. Mm -hmm. And what I do believe is we'll need something similar to uh, what uh, BBC have done with their global language, how they call it. And I think we saw it in, was it in BuzzFeed or what was it? You mean uh, this one? Yeah, this one. Uh, uh, Future Learn, yeah. Yeah. And this. I think we will need something like this, but I think we actually might, as we discussed, we might need more than just three. So we might need small, medium, large, extra large for the yeah. really big screens. Yeah. Um, where we, yeah, where we said that 14 pixels is definitely too small. Maybe even 16 pixels would still be yeah. small. Maybe we need 18 pixels. Uh, but I think either of the two approach will work. I think you could just go and adapt the type scale that we have today for mobile, mm -hmm. simply because, as you said, it works really well on the desktop sizes as we have them today. The our type yeah. scale. And I mean, I, I, I think I think they work. Uh, they, they still have to be implemented in the product. Yeah. But we we are using it in our design files. This is what we've been using. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think it works well, uh, and, and it was tested, well, not in code, but just by using dev tools. I was testing yeah. it there, and also the markdown typography and all of that, and I think it works well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I agree that the, the range of sizes that we currently have is enough. If you would want to introduce an 11 pixel size for Mobile, I think that should be fine, but maybe it's only limited to mobile use, right? If you then yeah. have a table like that, you will have the extra, extra small or whatever the name would be disabled for, or, you know, just a slash, yeah. don't use exactly. it on desktop, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it, it, we could make it so it, not, it doesn't even appear, right? The, yeah, the, exactly. What they do, like, this is 11 here, but it, it, it ceases to exist in medium and large. Yeah. Like the it's, size is 14 here, yeah. 12, yeah. Or you could assign it the same size as the smallest size for that, for that range, for medium, mm. for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
that's also another thing. So I, I, I think I'm, I'm, yeah, I think I'm comfortable with that approach for the smaller sizes. Uh, I, one thing I'm particularly, I still have to test it is how small it can get. And if 11 is really, it's still not, not for reading paragraphs or anything like yeah. that, but if 11 is acceptable because we have, uh, as I showed you here, I used 11 pixels for these two breakpoints mm -hmm. for, for the issue path and ID. Um, and I, I thought like this, this can be a good use, like for really, really small data that usually people don't care that much. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if it can be too small. Uh, I see that for example, uh, I mean, the two biggest players in terms of designing for mobile are, of course, Apple and, and Google with the material yeah. design because they own the, the operating systems. The, but, um, and here, Apple, they go as low as 11 for captions. Yeah. So I think it's, it's fine. And with the, um, also, as I said before, we have to think about the, the target audience uh, and people that are usually using GitLab of course, we want them to keep having good vision for many, many years to keep working in software development mm. uh, industry. Uh, but I think it's enough if, and especially the distance that you have with your phone, uh, yeah, exactly. pixels can be, it's not that bad. Yeah. So something to be wary of is the color, right? You will need it to be a bit darker uh, for, that, for such a small size, just for accessibility reasons. You can oh, right. probably have it in okay, you know, okay, okay. quite yeah, a light yeah. gray, yeah. Right. And I yeah, think you, instead of we, we we should not have like what you're saying is uh, we should not like if this was eleven, yeah. Don't do something like this. Yeah, exactly. Because it's it's yeah. Really this bad. is really yeah. This is really <laughs> bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, something that I noticed in the Apple example you were showing is they also adjust tracking in the last uh, column. So, yeah, so the tracking is automatic because they use the, it's because of San Francisco. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And San Francisco, it automatically adapts the tracking uh, nice. according to your, and, and that's a really good thing. I mean, it, this is something I, I thought about as well. Not it's only, yeah, not only, not, not special, not so much for smaller sizes, but for larger ones. Larger and you ones, can see yeah. it here. Like for example, this size, and it's using the Helvetica. And if I were to use, so let me, where did I have that? I think I have it here. So exactly, so this is the difference. So here, in these examples, and when I was working with this typography scale, I was using San Francisco. So it's using SFUI display. Uh, and the display already does some of the tracking changes. So let me just show you. So if I change, so this is 28. If I change it from UI display to UI text, yeah. it automatically yeah. changes the tracking, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and this is, this is great. Uh, so, and if I now apply this to Helvetica, you can see that the tracking, okay, it's, it's a bit, it's a, it shrinked a little bit, but it's not as good as this. Yeah. Uh, it would require to have a little bit less tracking. Yeah. Something like this to be ideal. Uh, but the, the, the problem is uh, for you to do that because we have the font, we have the font stack uh, for, um, our typography, and you can see it here, yeah, uh, system. Apple system and blank and Segoia and Roboto and all of that. I, I don't know, I, I've tried to look into it, but it's very difficult to do specific tracking. Yeah, for, exactly. you, you, would have it, you would have to find which is the operating system that people are using um, and what is the version of the operating system as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even so, people might be using a different font especially on linux because in linux people can install whatever system font they want mm. uh, and and so it's very difficult for us to define uh, a specific tracking uh, but yeah. the good thing for us uh, users 
that, that, that have Mac is that we already have that for free using France, San Francisco. Yeah, you and, France, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and it works really well because if you go below, I think it's 21, you will see that the tracking will change immediately. I think, yeah, yeah. you can see that there it is. So this is, this is the point between 20 pixels and 19 pixels where the system automatically changes between SF display and SF text. Mm -hmm. And this is really cool. I guess in the future when they design a version of San Francisco that is uh, one of those flexible web fonts, you know? Yeah. Maybe that, that would be even better. Um, and, and it will automatically adapt to whatever. Yeah, it's 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 a it's an advantage of using a system font if it's a well designed font, right? And I think Apple always led the way in that regard, right? When it yeah. came to design, typography, all the things related. And I also think that Microsoft is actually catching up. So I think our Windows users will get cooler typography, or already have, right? Because they don't use Arial anymore on windows they use the um, sigo how is it pronounced yeah sigoi yeah sigoi ui yeah and it's quite it's it's an improvement compared to what Arial was it's mm -hmm. actually much more readable i'm not sure if they also switch between display and text sizes um, um it's hard to know because i don't have no, a i don't think so I don't think so, but um... yeah, I don't have any of the Microsoft's products. You get the Sigo, Sigo. How, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> if you Sigo, yes. <laughs> if you install any of the Office products, you get it, right? I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I have it. Uh, I don't know how, uh, but I think I, I managed to. Oh, nice. Download it somehow, <laughs> but but yeah, but yeah, it's it's, but again, it 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 shouldn't matter uh, which which font we're designing with. Uh, but but again, it, it's like you have to give give up if we're using system fonts, yeah. uh, which we are. You have to give up a bit of the control of over yeah. typography, um, and and know that people are going to use whatever font they have in their system. Yeah. Um, you know. So one last thing I wanted to touch on uh, regarding the larger breakpoints that you mentioned was, so let me quickly share my screen again. So as I said right now, the default, and this is what we have today for even the UI, uh, the UI typography that, that we see here is that paragraphs and labels, there are 14 pixels. And you mm -hmm. were saying that, for example, for you, and maybe, I mean, for everyone else that uses, uh, that is farther away from their screen, or their screen is bigger, 14 pixels is too small, even for uh, UI typography, or can be too yeah. small for UI typography. Yeah. Um, and, and people, I think if we increase the font size from, to, from 14 to 16, people, I think, would, would need a bit of time to adapt. I think it would be a good change. Uh, we would probably see a lot of people complaining about how how it changed and they were used to the 14 pixels yeah, yeah. Uh, and but uh, humans are animals of habit right so i think uh, uh, it's a, it could be a change for the better but the thing i'm i'm a bit worried about is if we do that we would have to change a lot of other things because for example because the 14 pixel is always also designs everywhere and, and it's taken into account everywhere we have different components, for example, buttons, right? Yeah. So if we increase the font size on buttons to 16 pixels, maybe they now look a bit too cramped because of the padding or even here in the, this search bar, for example, if I put it at 16 pixels, Maybe it's now looking a bit too cramped. Yeah. And what could we, we could end up doing is, okay, now we have to increase the height of this um, element, you know? Increase the size of the UI in general, basically, yeah. 
yeah, we have to increase this. And now we also maybe have to increase the line height. Yeah. And, and yeah, so we would have to increase the size of many different things, you know? Um, I think that's what probably is going to happen. Uh, is we're going to have to do something like this so we can still have a breathable UI. Yeah. Or else if we keep the same sizes because some things, it's mostly of things that have defined heights like buttons and things. If we do that, everything will look a bit too cramped. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I know and I agree. And I think on the long, long term, this should be something to strive for. Mm -hmm. it's, um, if you increase the font size, the base font size, basically the whole UI should increase with it, ideally, right? But yeah. as, um, as a way to get there, intermediate step, it could be mm -hmm. that we only increase the base font size for the content and not the UI. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Because right. UI in general, you don't read UI, right? You see a button and you read mm -hmm. the label and that's pretty much it. You don't read paragraphs mm -hmm. inside buttons, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's easier to digest even if the font size is a bit smaller. But when you read a paragraph in, a, in an issue description at 14 pixels, it is a bit painful when you spend 30, 30 minutes reading on an issue, right? And it's in 14 pixels. Mm -hmm. It gets a bit hard, but if you just use the interface and you, yeah, okay, I need to click this button and you already know most of the interface uh, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So you're recognizing elements based on other things besides the labels, the position, the color, right? The proximity to other things, uh, prominence. So I would say that as an intermediate step, maybe we could just increase the fonts, the base font size of the actual content. Yes. And leave the UI as it is, and then maybe experiment with increasing the UI with the increase of the base font as well. Yeah. Because maybe it, it turns out that it doesn't actually look good or it doesn't really have as many advantages to actually go and do it. That yeah, that, that's, that's a really good point. That's a really good point because uh and, and that's what exactly what we're doing with the like these small steps that's what we're doing with these different uh type scales like these three ui yeah. markdown and mark compact markdown so right now we are going to implement markdown it's already i mean it's already implemented we're going to introduce it in the product itself yeah. uh next it's going to be compact markdown and only after these, we're going to have UI typography. So we're already doing that step by step. And what you're saying makes sense. So maybe what we can do then is increase the base font size for oh, Markdown wow. and maybe Compact Markdown as well. Yeah. Because Compact Markdown is what you're saying. Like it, This would increase um, the font size for everything that is... Uh, so let me put font size. Let me see if this works. Yeah, it works more or less. Yeah. It would increase in this area, which for me, even right now, like looking at this, it looks so much better. Uh, it's so much more, much readable. Uh, yeah. And also uh, increase it in, um, in comment areas, for example, yeah. right? So that exactly. would be the, so let me increase that as well. I don't know if it works well, but yeah, more or less. Mm. It's much yeah. more readable, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the rest would still be at 14, right? That's what you yeah. were, were suggesting. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it's some, something we could experiment with. And I'll try to include that as part of this issue. I, yeah. I cannot make any promises because I think working for the smaller um, breakpoints, it's more attainable right now in the short term. But I completely agree with you that we should strive for in the future to have to work more towards this because most people that use GitLab use it in large screens. They don't use it on mobile. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we've seen from, from, um, from the tracking that we uh, did in the past and the tracking that we're doing today. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because you, you need to basically design your typography based on what, what the content is used for and the UI content is completely different from content that is, you know, meant for long reading. Mm. And I think it's awesome that actually that we have this separation of 
markdown typography, and then we have comp compact markdown for issues, and that we have a separate separate styles for UI. And I think this will give us a lot of flexibility yeah. to experiment with in the future as well. Because as yeah. we said, maybe it doesn't work out that the whole UI increases in size. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you're 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 completely right. That's that's one of the reasons why we thought it would be much better to it's also one of the, the, the big benefits of doing it this way, not only because mm -hmm. functionally it makes sense as a solution to have different type styles uh, yeah. or else, as you saw people to have this size, they were always doing, uh, doing this yeah. to have this same size, but they, they, should, they shouldn't be doing this, right? They should be just typing a heading one and we should display it uh, in the best way possible. They shouldn't have yeah. to think, that they need to do it ahead uh, heading three. Yeah. Um, so this is not only a good solution, but it allows us to break up the work in a better way mm. uh, as well. Cool. Yeah. Any, anything else you, you want to um, talk about regarding the typography? Anything else you wanted to uh, mention? So I mentioned the base font size, and I think that's actually quite important, right? Because yeah. we do want a GitLab to be as accessible as possible. Yeah, and I think as I tried earlier to, I tried increasing my uh, uh, resolution, right? And it's actually yeah. it's not defining the exact resolution; it's just how large the text I want the text to be, the basic mm. Apple setting. And it didn't increase the font size at all in GitLab. So maybe that's because it's set in pixels, but it shouldn't so be you, like that. You changed it? Did you change it to one of these smaller ones? Is that it? I, I changed it to larger ones, yeah. Oh, you changed it to these larger ones? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, should, it should affect. Uh, it should, right? right? Yeah. yeah. And it didn't. And it's not good because, uh, you know, it's easy to assume that everyone has the perfect vision, but people don't. Uh, yeah. I can speak for myself as well. I don't have very good vision, actually. I don't use glasses, but I, my right eye is kind of, you know, I don't see very well with it, and I'm colorblind as well. But that's another topic. <laughs> You're, I, I didn't know you were colorblind. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. am. Slightly, well, you know, not as, not completely or very harshly, but slightly colorblind. Yeah. Ah, that's interesting. That's no, and that's that's it's really good that we have uh, you on on the team as well to to look out for more of these things. It's good to yeah. To have like that yeah great. yeah i always thought about my color blindness being something that i should be ashamed of as a designer right especially when i work more on yeah. branding and logos and stuff like that I, I think it's a strength to be honest yeah and then i realized it was actually a strength <laughs> because when i yeah. worked on ui i actually saw okay you know that this contrast is is kind of killing my eyes but all the yeah. other people saw it as well right yeah. and i said no no the contrast the contra contrast is not good so we need to change it <laughs> And yeah, it's actually a strength. strength. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, we do need to um, stop using or try to avoid using pixel sizes, maybe even for yeah. breakpoints as well. Uh, because I saw that um, Bootstrap comes with breakpoints set in pixels, but ideally uh, the breakpoints should use EMs, right? It should use EMs. That that yeah, that's yeah. that's uh, one way to to do it. It's using EMs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because yeah. it's what you're saying. It will respond to the base font size. Uh, exactly. So if it will increase the font size, it will also uh, like the the breakpoints will also respond to yeah. how big the font is. No, you're yeah. you're correct in that. I think it's it's easy to to change this if we want. Um, okay. Yeah. That that would be good. Yeah. Um, because exactly. setting everything in pixels is a bit easier at first, but it's, it becomes very limiting when you want to make the app very usable for everyone, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we should try to try to move away from it, but it's not urgent, I would say. Yeah, I, this yeah, it's going to be step by step. Yeah, uh, exactly. But uh, but uh, yeah, I agree with you. This is it's going to be one of those things that we probably change. And it's not going to be that much big of a change, uh, to be honest. And we could, I, I think, I'm not, I'm not sure because um, I, know, I don't know that well uh, about our code base. Yeah. But I think if you just 
do tr the translation of what we have today uh, in pixels and translate that to M's, you wouldn't even notice any difference. Uh, yeah, right. And if it was properly made, you wouldn't notice any difference at all. Only if you start increasing your font size in your browser like this, you would notice that uh, things are moving around. And yeah. if, if, for example, if I increase it this big, you would be in a mobile layout now. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so I think that's it. Thank you so much, Matei, for sure. uh, no talking with me and, and going through all of this and your thoughts as well. Yeah. And yeah, I'll keep you posted. I know this, this month is going to be a bit crazy with the holidays and all of that, but I'll try to have something ready so we can uh, continue discussing this. And uh, yeah. yeah, and I'll post so this, this is... to, on YouTube if you don't have any problems with that. And, no, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, and also uh, in the issue, so other people can can read. Uh, yeah, perfect our conversation. So this is eleven seven, right? Actually. So yeah, this is for this. Yeah, this is for this uh, milestone. Mm, yeah. Nice. That that's why we're talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Um. Okay. Yeah, let me know if you need any more help with it. I'm always glad to help. I'm, I'll actually be off. For the final week in December and the first week in January, okay. but until then I'm available. Sure. Uh, I took a bit less work this milestone, so I'll be more available. I think. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you so much for your help. Sure. And no I hope you have a good day. Yeah. You too. See ya. Bye bye. Bye.